in this week's episode. I'm talking to Angie Veras from Vario Talent in US about how she got into sourcing, what sourcing in Greece is like, and what tools she uses. Welcome to episode 16 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Longwin. This week's episode is brought to you by SourceCon Europe. SourceCon in Budapest is in less than two weeks, on the 12th and 13th of June. There's still time to get a ticket. And if you use our discount code SCSHOW, you'll get 20% discount. Hope to see you all there. I asked Angie how she got into sourcing. I started off as a stockbroker. I graduated from college with a marketing degree. And I went to, uh, I, I saw an interview. I saw something on the, on the internet. It was, it was just launching. We had new computers at the school. And so I applied to work at this company, which was Dean Witter, um, probably, old, I mean, very old school. And then um, they were, uh, there was a merger. Now it's Morgan Stanley, today Morgan Stanley. So I became a broker and I helped, uh, I was trying to raise money to invest people's funds. I did that for a little while, but then I was so enamored with technology and they had all these different tools. You can go in and put numbers and when are you going to retire? How much money do you need to put your kid through college? And there was a position where I could become like a marketing strategist to go around to all the different Morgan Stanley branches in a, in a region and help train the brokers on how to use marketing and technology together to build the book of business. Yeah. So I was in sales pretty much and I traveled uh, you know, all over the place and that was great. I decided to leave right before September 11th. Um, it was a lot of travel, yeah. crazy, crazy travel. And so I left, I took a little time off and I went to Greece naturally with my, my sister and I actually took the summer off and we went to Greece and came back on September 10th. Oh, wow. Excited and ready to, you know, go on a job search. And I, and then September 11th happened. And then after that, I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm done. There's there, nobody's hiring in financial services. Absolutely nothing. So my parents had a restaurant and I went and I helped them. My brother would make fun of me. He's like, you went from buy low to sell high to, would you like regular or decaf? <laughs> <laughs> what else was I going to do? You know? So I, I made friends with a recruiter. Um, she was a, a lady that was, you know, just a family friend and I would go and see her from time to time. And she's like, I don't have anything for you. I'm sorry. I don't have anything for you. And she sent me on a bunch of interviews. I couldn't find anything. And she said, well, why don't you just become a recruiter? Hmm. And I thought, what the hell? What, what does a recruiter do? I had no idea. And um, so I said, okay, I mean, that's better than nothing. I might as well. I need a job. And so I, I started at this financial services recruiting firm agency. There were probably about a dozen people that worked there. Uh, my training was, here's a Yellow Pages, here's a phone, <laughs> here's a computer. And I was like, Okay, what do yeah. I do with it? Sounds and like when I started in sales, so yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. I mean, I registered for a Gmail account back then when, when you actually had to be invited yeah. to register for Gmail. And then I discovered after using monster.com and jobsinthemoney.com and you know, career builder, I just, and Craigslist. We used to post jobs on Craigslist. Yep. I discovered LinkedIn. And I thought, I was like, whoa, what is this? I thought this was the most amazing thing in the world, LinkedIn. And so I, d I did that for a couple of years. I cried. I cried for the first six months working there. It was a commission-based job. I was bringing home like 300 bucks. Like commission only. and a Commission only. Oh, well, what am I going to do on $300? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't buy milk for my kid on $300, you know? So I did that for a couple of years. And then I ended up meeting someone on the train going to work one day who owned a consulting company. And he said, why don't you come and join me? And we're, you know, we're looking to grow uh, this business. So I went into consulting uh, and from that point I have done a ton of stuff. I mean, I went to, um, I've worked with a couple startups in Chicago. I've worked with large organizations, KPMG mm -hmm. on their research team, which research sourcing, same thing. Yeah. And, um, I've done some RPO work. And then about a year ago, I decided I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to be in corporate. I don't want to be in, you know, I just, I just didn't want to do that. I wanted more flexibility. I have a small daughter, small, mm -hmm. well, she's 11. Um, <laughs> But, you know, she's small. She's still my baby. And it's yeah, a critical yeah. time for her. It's a critical time yeah. for her growing up. And I, I want to I be home and I want, I want the flexibility. So I started VIA to, um, you know, just provide sourcing services. I, I didn't, didn't really have anything defined, but I had some really great relationships throughout the years that when people saw that I was doing my own thing, they were like, 
oh, can you help us here? Oh, and can you help us here? So it's growing slowly and steadily, and it allows me to be flexible. It allows me not to have to take PTO to go to visit my family in Greece. Exactly. And I absolutely love it. I mean, I'm looking for investment banking folks one day, and then I'm looking for salespeople, you know, so I, I do enjoy that. It keeps my skills fresh. Yeah. But I, you know, I didn't, I didn't intend to go off on my own just so quickly, completely. Uh, I did work through other agencies as well. And then one day I was, um, I had actually applied to speak at an event in San Francisco and they were doing this like pre little startup thing. And they said, Hey, would you like to present about your new little company? Cause I just, excuse me, I just started the company. And I said, I said, yes, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> and so I had to put together a logo, a website business cards. I mean, all that stuff, which I did everything by myself. That's what my website's kind of, you know, scrappy, but we'll get there. Um, but the, the, the rest of the infrastructure is in place. And I thought no problem. And from that point, Mark, I just, I got very comfortable with feeling uncomfortable because I think if you allow yourself to just step out and just do what you feel is right, you'll be successful. And yeah. I'm not saying that there's always been success. I mean, there was a time where I didn't have a project for a little while and I was like, Oh my God, what's next? And then it always happens right before I'm about to go on vacation because we're leaving for Budapest and then we'll be in Greece for a few months. Um, it just, it happens that everyone wants to talk about, let's do some work together. Yeah. Oh, so it's good. I'm, 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 I'm very, I'm very happy to, to be one of that. I think that, I think I, I do give a lot of credit to my first boss for Morgan Stanley, who's still a really close friend of mine and we get together and we do lunches every, you know, every few months. Um, and I continue to pick his brain and I always say it's because of him. I mean, I had to cold call. I don't even know how many hours a day. And if I stepped away from my desk one minute early, he would be, I mean, on top of me, get back to your desk. You are not allowed to leave. So, I mean, I had to do mock calls. And at that point, you don't, you don't fear rejection. If you're cold calling over and over and over again, okay, so you're not interested, no problem. Move on to the next one. Obviously, working with different clients, what's your kind of processes or how do you kick things off? Do you have kind of special tools or special way of working that you like? I think for every client, I try to keep a structured process, but I probably, you know, don't keep to it depending on, uh, depending on the situation. So I actually have a kickoff call with a new client this afternoon. Um, so we'll get on the phone. We've had a number of discussions. We've reviewed proposals. We've got contracts signed, but we'll get on a kickoff, you know, 30, 45 minute kickoff call to just make sure everybody's on the same page and expectations mm -hmm. are managed. So starting today, we're going to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. We'll source X amount of candidates. We'll put them in this, um, in this, you know, database, and then you'll have access to it. We'll have weekly calls. Um, you know, we just kind of go through the expectations and the process, which we, again, we've had a lot of these discussions, but today will be just the final one. Yeah. Um, I do weekly updates because okay. I want to be fully transparent with the client on exactly what they're getting. So if we start the sourcing for this company today, a week from now, we're going to do a call to recalibrate, go through the profiles, make sure we're hitting the right profiles, yeah. targeting them, and then, you know, get, get an update from the team on what's next okay let's reach out to these people these people don't seem to fit the profile and we'll do that on a weekly basis you're still working in greece sometimes as well oh yes yes so we we travel frequently to greece my um my family is originally from there my husband is originally from there um so we go my my stepson actually started college last year he's studying computer science and engineering there was a like a sorcerers who code class that someone had created a, a last year in the summer and it was fun funny because I wanted to get on those calls. It was like 2 a.m. when I was in. So it didn't really help to go out and eat and then have a you know, couple beers or a glass of wine or a bottle and then come home and then I'm like this on the computer. I'm like, oh my God, I want to watch <laughs> 2 this. Yeah. And I was trying to follow along, but my stepson would sit next to me and he'd be like, wow, this is fascinating. I'd love to learn that. So because he's studying computer science and engineering and then the sourcing piece, I think is just fascinating. I mean, it fascinates me. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time with him this summer to help me out, um, you know, while he's in school. Yeah. So we, we do spend that. So we'll be in Budapest. Um, then we'll, you know, then we're going to go spend, we're actually going to stay in Greece until the end of August. Oh, cool. So it'll, it'll, it'll be nice. I will work from there. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing with what we do. We, we can do that from basically everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm actually hosting a disrupt HR event in Athens. The yeah, first one. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've got, you know, the registration is open. So if you're free, 
in June and you want to come over to Greece, let me know. I'm still looking for a couple more speakers. We've got some speakers confirmed. I'm not, I'm not looking to do something huge, like, you know, a couple hundred people. I want to have a nice intimate gathering mm -hmm. of folks and just share some ideas. Cause I think that disrupt idea of five minutes in front of people yeah. is just, it's so cool. It doesn't keep, you know, doesn't, doesn't get boring. No, exactly. Um, and you have a lot of different, um, different backgrounds. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I'll be speaking at a couple different events in Europe as well. What's your kind of go-to tool stack? I'm obviously working with such variety in clients. Yeah, there isn't one thing that kind of works for everybody. I'm, uh, as far as ATSs are concerned, I, I'm in the process of evaluating which one I personally want to use. Because now mm -hmm. with clients, a lot of times I work within their systems. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I keep, I, I'm a little old school. I got, I keep Google sheets with, uh, you know, with, with my database as well. Um, I'm a huge fan of workable, um, you know, not because they're Greek, but you know, played a little <laughs> bit, a little, little influence, but I met workable, um, a couple years ago when they were quite small and just got to know them very well. Mm -hmm. I, I work with their product team. When I go visit um, Greece, I do go, they invite me to their office and kind of advise them on here. You know, they show me what, what's next. Yeah. Um, so I really do like that. They have an amazing search tool inside yeah. of Google. So I really do like that, but I've used, you know, everything from Aperture to Greenhouse to Lever to all those different tools. And each and every one has their, you know, plus and minus. Yeah, exactly. Um, as far as sourcing tools are concerned, I'm a big fan of Seekout. Um, I really do enjoy it and hiring solved. I really do like, and I've seen some really good enhancements with that. I, I like the fact that you can actually upload a similar profile to what you're looking for and then put in the keywords. And a lot of times you're not going to get the perfect results from some of these tools. But what I do is when it generates the Boolean string, I go in and I tweak it. So just to make sure that I'm targeting the right people. I mean, I've, I've used hire tool as well. Um, probably not as much as I've used the other two. Mm. Um, recruit them. I do mm -hmm. like recruit them and I do the same thing there. I go in and I tweak the Boolean strings, but I get a lot of results. That's what I'm using right now for yeah. my area search. Oh, and source hub. I use source hub. Okay. Um, uh, you know, it, it cheers to the Irish lads. So yeah. I do, uh, I do use source hub, um, to generate that, uh, it generate the Boolean strings as well. So I think, I think those are at the top. I'm, unless I'm missing something else. Those are the ones that I typically use. I visit, um, I visit Boolean Black Belt uh, pretty often just to see what the new updates are, if I need to find, you know, some, some things. But even the Facebook groups, you know, and I know you're a member exactly. of many of those Facebook groups. There's, I'm sure I'm missing out on so much out there's there. There's always I'm, something new. Yeah. yeah. So I try to keep up. Swoop Talent. I talked to Stacey Chapman, who's the, the founder of Swoop Talent, and went through a demo. And I think that they're doing some amazing stuff. So I'm looking forward to trying that. So, you know, whatever works, whenever I have yeah. time um, is what I do. You know, as far as recruitment marketing, uh, and I know this is more sourcing, but I do like Clinch. I use Clinch, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, to create job landing pages, but I know a lot of ATSs do that as well. So there's such a huge mix, and I think it really depends on the client. My goal is to really figure out exactly what my tech stack is going to be. And I'm looking forward to um, Sarah. Sarah Goldberg is actually going to be presenting at, we're doing a SourceCon Chicago mm -hmm. this week, Thursday. Um, I think she's going to be presenting more of what, how, how the tech stacks align together, like what your entire um, yeah. tool. Uh, and she might actually be presenting this in, um, in the fall. In an ideal world, I would have, I use A, B, C, D, E, but everything is constantly changing. You're in Budapest, um, but you're mm -hmm. not talking there. And then you're, you're talking in, um, in Seoul in London. Yes, uh, Shannon reached out. I'm going to be running a um, roundtable oh, in cool. Budapest. So I will be um, uh, running a roundtable there. I'm part of the welcome wagon, so mm -hmm. I'll be wearing a purple shirt, I'm assuming. I may do a little bit of the purple hair again. <laughs> like, uh, see how I feel. Um, so it'll, it'll, it'll be really nice. I'm really looking forward to it. And then um, Sourcing Summit in the UK. And then um, Wreckfest. I was also invited to speak oh, cool. at Wreckfest. And that's going to be in July. Yeah. And then I'm going to try to spend some time. And then Workable, I'm doing not Workable. I'm doing a. I'm hosting Disrupt HR at yeah. Workable's office in Athens, and that's going to be in June. And then hopefully spend a little time with my husband. Maybe maybe send the kids off for a week so we could go take a little vacation. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, what would what what would you do in Greece? I mean, it's not like there's anything to. <laughs> I don't know. Let me think about that. Hmm. <laughs>
I don't know. Is that what? Oh, no, I mean, islands? <laughs> yeah. Recruiting in Greece. What's the big kind of difference in there? I don't know a lot of sources at all in Greece. And I can only imagine that that's one of those markets that is, for me, is just an enigma. It's like, where would you even start? I had no idea about the market. So when I was interested in doing work with Greece, I just started talking to people that I knew. Yeah. Uh, I talked to a friend who knew somebody who was a developer who was working for some firm who put me in touch with this other person and, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 the, the Greek connections. And so I ended up being connected with a gentleman who founded a software development consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And when I met him and his partner, they had... I don't know, like 30 employees, maybe not even that many. You know, they have like five or six employees, my, my bad. And today they have almost 300. Oh, wow. Three years ago. So what they do is they offer software develop, offshore, yeah. kind of offshore software development kind of services. Project, yeah, kind of project-based, yeah. Project-based. So they work with a lot of large companies in Greece, in London, um, and they, they've just been global expanding, you know, huge. Yeah. So what I did, I just did some sourcing for them. I built them pipelines and did initial outreach, which was really nice because I would do the outreach and then I would make an introduction to the actual yeah. recruiter staff. But it's very different as far as contacting. So you can contact them, send them an email, give them a little more information, but then you shouldn't send them a second follow-up for like a month because <laughs> they don't like to be bothered. And I'm yeah. like, what? Are you kidding me? And they're like, and don't text anybody and don't call them on their mobile phones. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because they get offended. Yeah. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. However, I do have to say that I would get sometimes immediate responses from people. Okay. So I had the luxury with the time difference. If I would send them during the day, I would wake up and I'd have an inbox full yeah. of people coming back to me and they would come back, people checking out my LinkedIn profile, people checking out uh, Agile, people, the company, people, yeah. um, and I'd be sharing and posting about them because they didn't have brand recognition. And I think just doing all of that and the yeah. tweets and Facebook and all that built a really nice brand. And they're, they're working with some pretty amazing large companies globally. So it, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been absolutely amazing to work with them. And so they implemented Workable because the C, well, I think that there was the relationship, the two yeah. CEOs, Workable and my client knew each other. And that's how I got into the, you know, into the circuit with Workable. Um, but it is a little different. I'm not used to having to wait one month to call someone <laughs> or to make a follow-up email. Uh, I'm used to, you know, three or four days maximum to send a follow-up. I mean, I didn't follow the rules until I was told, but, you know, I did it every week. I did it every week and then, you know, was told don't message and don't text. And I mean, I was lucky that, you know, people didn't come back to me and say, you know, take me off your list. If it works for one role, keep it for other roles too. Yeah. For example, the messaging, you know, I... I get great responses from people. I, when, when they come back to me and they say, wow, this is not the traditional recruitment email. Yeah. You actually took the time to read my profile. And it's just because I added a couple key words. You know, I added your name, dear Mark. And at the end, I also addressed you. Thank you, Mark. You know, yeah. and I also acknowledge that you work at ThoughtWorks. If I'm portraying something positive and they're not interested, one day they will be. Yeah, exactly. So nurturing th that pipeline, I think, is so important. And the satisfaction I got from people coming back and saying, oh, you know, I'm not interested at this time, but I've heard these amazing things about the organization yeah. or whatever. You know that those people are going to reach back out. I've actually had people reach out who weren't a fit for a role and said, hey, can you help me with something else? Yeah. Now the timing is right. But I did that from agency. Yeah. An agent, they used to make fun of me and they'd be like, if you can't use them, and we had paper, I mean, paper resumes. If you can't, <laughs> if you're not going to use that resume and that person, don't bother talking to them again. And I'm like, no, because one day that person's going to recommend someone. Yeah. That person's going to have a head of TA job maybe somewhere that they can give me some job orders. So I took it that way. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think it did well. I have some friends from 15 years ago that I made that I placed. Why oh, shouldn't sure. I be in touch with them? So it's it's the networking the networking piece i think is so so important what's yeah. um something exciting that you're working on at the, that you're going to be working on the next kind of six months or a year i really think i want to take a little more time to evaluate some more tools mm -hmm. um I, I as far as projects you know what companies i'm targeting i usually target the small to mid-sized companies because those are the ones and there are so many in chicago too <laughs> there those are the ones that that either don't have the bandwidth or the resources to scale at a quick at a quick rate, um, but they have money. So even you know Series A, Series B funding, those are the companies that have that, so that they can implement the recruiting process and systems, and then get the recruiting. So in an ideal world, I'd love to work with you know high growth, uh, high tech companies that are making a difference, that are being you know disruptors. Yeah. I know it's, that's a cliche term, but they are that are being disruptors. Yeah. 
And I'd like to do a lot more work in Chicago. And I do some work here. I do yeah, some work but you're all over the place and even like both international, but also just all over the U.S. Yeah. And if I, if I can figure out a way to automate it a little bit more as opposed to, you know, the day-to-day -day tasks, which some of those are always going to be there. I mean, at the end of the day, the person that we're trying to recruit is a human. Yeah. <laughs> so there needs to be some Our human. Our product is, yeah, exactly. Our product is something we actually have to go out and find. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I love it. I mean, I don't think I'm ever going to give up sourcing 100%. No. I mean, I, I do have some contract recruiters that help me with projects because I can't handle them all. And I'm always hands-on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very, um, what's the word? I, 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 I like be, having my hands in everything because I want to make sure that the client is taken care of. And it's, eventually, it's, it's your name at the end of the day that goes on the, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Eventually, if I, can, if I can grow it to a point where I have someone like me who's going to manage the projects and then I can go out and do some more business development, mm -hmm. I think that that would be um, ideal. Thank you very much uh, for, for having time with me, Angie. No, this was wonderful. I'm looking forward to catching up in Budapest. Yes, and like two, oh. two couple, like two and a half weeks, something like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I got to start packing. <laughs> No, I just came back from a trip and I'm not going anywhere until then. So I got to catch up with work. Yeah. But, um, if I don't talk to you before, before then, have a safe trip over and uh, we'll cheers when we get yeah. down there. And if people want to follow you, where, uh, where can they best uh, keep up with what you're, what you're doing and all your adventures? Yes. Well, thank you for that. So LinkedIn, obviously you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, uh, just Angie Veros. Twitter, my Twitter handle is at Angie Veros. And then I'm open about Facebook. If anybody wants to connect with me on Facebook, you won't find me under just Angie Veros because my real name is Angelopoulos. So Angie Veros, Angelopoulos. I'm, ha I'm happy to connect. And for, for someone like myself who joined the industry not having a clue and not having resources, or maybe they were available, but I was unaware, I want to offer that out to everybody out there who doesn't know. Uh, I'm there to help. And it's just, you know, if anybody wants to connect with me and just, you know, share ideas and I will learn from everybody as well. Um, please feel free to do so. I think that that would be great. Perfect. Well, see you very soon, Angie. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back next week with a new sourcing conversation. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you'll be the first ones to know about new shows.